Today's for man. It's a precious moment. Oh, today's woman. It's a glorious moment. Today's woman. It's a righteous moment. Oh, today's woman. It's a prayerful moment. Today's woman. It's a righteous woman. Today's woman. Today's woman. Awesome, amazing, wonderful, fantastic, beautiful. Just beautiful words to describe Monday for us because, yes, it's today's woman Monday. We're here with you at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Mondays. And Mondays are beautiful days for us because we come, we have fun, and we learn also. So today we have a very interesting topic. And so, you know, say hi, say hello. Let us know where you're watching us from. And we're going to ask very interesting questions. So in the chronology of your family, which order are you? Are you the firstborn, the secondborn, the middle child, the last baby? Who are you? And do you agree with, you know, our theorists who say that your birth order determines how you behave, <laughs> your personality, your characteristics, or even sometimes your achievements. So it's going to be a very fun topic because every one of us, of course, we fit in some way or shape, you know, in the family dynamics, whether you are the firstborn or the baby last. And the baby last will tell you, don't call me a baby. <laughs> <laughs> Don't call me a kid sister or a kid brother because they are fighting so hard for their independence. So it's going to be a wonderful time. So if you're on here, kindly share our link and let it be a blessing. So we have all the way from Gettysburg District in the Maryland region. We have First Lady Sheila Ejiani. She's married to Reverend Thomas Ejiani. She's a mother, also works, I would say, in the banking field. We'll give her administration. And in the kingdom, she loves God. She loves to worship. She loves to wear women empowerment issues. First Lady Sheila, it's good to have you. You're welcome to today's event. Thank you so much. The pleasure is mine. Awesome, awesome, awesome. And yes, so Canada we go. We have the regional first lady of North York, Toronto, Canada, right here. She's married to Apostle Daniel Engman. Our mama, Debbie Engman, also has early childhood education. We call her our spices guru right here on today's woman. And mommy is on a steady journey, right? Last week, she was like, look, I'm going with the rich king theme. Today, she's like, I'm going to England, right? I'm, I'm just right there with the Queen of England. So mommy came to make a statement. <laughs> mommy, you look beautiful. She's a mother of strong young men, a beautiful granddaughter in the kingdom. She's a mother of many. Mama Debbie, it's always a blessing to have you. You're welcome on today's woman. Thank you so very much. And I'm so honored, highly honored and blessed to be here once again. God bless you. Amen. And God bless you. <laughs> the topic of the day, birth order. So who orders the birth? <laughs> who orders the birth and where are you in that order? Now, let, let me go to the Bible and then more than me, I'll just uh, come to you. But this is a very interesting topic. And the Bible talks to us about so many examples of people and their positions in the family. But I'm going to the book of Genesis, chapter 25, 29 to 34 NIV. Once when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau came in from the open country, famished. He said to Jacob, quick. Let me have some of that red stew. I'm famished. That is why he was also called Edom. Jacob replied, first, sell me your birthright. Look, I am about to die, Esau said. What good is the birthright to me? 
But Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore an oath to him, selling his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and some lentil stew. He ate and drank, and then got up and left. So Esau despised his birthright. What a poignant scripture. Mama Debbie, how would you explain birth order? We're looking at the dynamics between Jacob and Esau. Okay, thank you so very much. Birth order. As all of us, I would start with me being number four. In the front, in the front of six. <laughs> you know, so birth order is the order in which a person is born in relation to their siblings. And when we look at the story of Esau, which, you know, you can see that, you know, he yeah, being the firstborn, didn't fully regard where God had placed him. I would say birth, our birth, whether you're first, second, third, wherever, is orchestrated by God. Mm. Because to start off with, there were many, excuse me to say, sperms to start off with. Mm -hmm. And there was a battle and a struggle, and then one was able to go in. And if twins, as we say, sometimes they're identical or fraternal. You know, so it is ordered by God. But it being ordered by God, I would say that where you have been placed is so key. And mm -hmm. you need to recognize who has allowed you to be there and be able to walk worthy. And we, we shouldn't be like Esau, who felt it wasn't a big deal. So for food, common food, he wouldn't have died. But for food, and to a lot of people, for so many other things, they also sell their birthright. May mm -hmm. we not sell our birthright. But may we cherish where we have been placed and walk worthy of God. Amen. 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 May we not sell our birthright, but may we cherish where we have been placed. Very, very powerful. God bless you so much. So much so much. President Sheila, birth order from your uncle as well. Thank you so much. I think mommy said it all. Uh, birth order is um, the order in which siblings are born in the family. And I would say that it comes with um, privileges. It comes with privileges. In relation to Jacob and Esau, one thing I noticed was that Esau sold his birthright. Mm. But after selling his birthright, he expected to get the benefits and the privileges that goes with it, them selling the birthright. And it wasn't going to happen. That mm -hmm. is why Jacob took what was rightfully his or her, uh, his, if I may put it. Sometimes, as believers, just as Mommy said, we sell our birthright and right. expecting mm -hmm. us to, I mean, get the privileges that goes with it. Um, the Bible tells us when you read Colossians chapter one verse fifteen, the Bible says that the Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn mm -hmm. of all creation. Yeah. When Paul equates the image of God with being the firstborn of creation and the role that Jesus came to play, that is what God is expecting us to play mm -hmm. as the firstborn of all creation, and that responsibility is on us. So, if you are a child of God and you don't play your role as the firstborn of all creation, but you still expect to get the blessings and the benefits that goes with the firstborn of all creation that's not going to happen that is why we run around in circles not finding our way we just sell that privilege that glory that god has given to us that comes with us being the firstborn of creation you know as i said it comes with privileges and being a child of god comes with blessings mm -hmm. the bible tells us if you walk well with god the way you were expected to all these blessings and more will come to you so if you want that birth order to work, play the role that matches with what um, your birth order. That's how I'll put it. Amen. God bless you so much, right? The sun is the radius. He's the first one of all creations. God bless you for bringing that into the conversation, right? So she says there are privileges and there's a the role. We have to play it. It's getting interesting already. Say hi, say hello. Let us know where you're watching us from and go ahead and please share, you know, our link and let us know where you get on. Tell us, are you a first one? Are you the middle child? Are you the last one? Mother, says she's fourth. President Sheila, where are you? I'm third. 
Last <laughs> my turn. All right, I'm first. So it, it gets it. <laughs> it's getting interesting already. Interesting dynamics. Well, wherever you are, tell us. Are you the first? Are you the third? Are you the fourth? Are you the last? Let us know. It's going to be fun. But getting back to you know the scripture about Jacob and Esau. He says, well, what is the birthright to me? Despising it, I am back again to Genesis chapter 25. And then 32, he says, look, I am about to die. Esau said, what well, good is the birthright to me? Mordebi, is the bet order relevant? Because he says to him, what, what good is it? Who is more important to him than his birthright? Is bet order relevant? Why and how should we look at it? Mordebi. Best. Birth order is very, very relevant. If God chooses to make you the firstborn, he has a reason for doing that. And Mama Sheila said it, you know, and I would also add with Exodus chapter 4 uh, from verse 21 going, you know, to do with the Egyptians. He says, then you shall say to Pharaoh, this is what the Lord says, Israel is my firstborn. Mm -hmm. Israel is my firstborn. So they should go and go and worship me. Being that, you know, being the first one, the beginning of all things, the beginning of all things, it is a privilege that God has given unto us. And it comes like Mama Sheila said, it comes with certain blessings that is also attached. Originally, and from time past, first ones are supposed to inherit. They are supposed to receive the family blessings. And when they do, then they are supposed to look after their siblings in case the, 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 the father is passed. You know, so first one, God intentionally set it up that way. That's why he said Israel is his firstborn, representing mm -hmm. his image, who he's supposed to be. So for all of us, the firstborns are supposed to, uh, a higher standard is expected from them, mm -hmm. more than from the rest of the siblings coming along. Because for you, you open the womb and you are supposed to set a pace. You are supposed to set a, a trend so mm -hmm. that the others following you will be able to see that this is what is done in the family and be able to follow. That's why it's so sad. But Esau, I don't know whether, you know, Mama Becky, Mama Rebecca didn't <laughs> do a good job. By, maybe because of the revelation that God had given unto him. You know, sometimes when you receive certain revelations, instead of, you know, even you could have gone to God to plead, please, you know, he is the first mm -hmm. and he's going to bring problem if the second is going to be the one who is going to inherit. So God, please, is there something I can do as a mom to guide this firstborn who seems, you know, you have said that he will, you know, serve his brother. Is there something I can do to help him mm -hmm. so that he will stand right as, you know, the firstborn? But I guess she also took it up because God had said it. But God wants us to come to him, reason together, you know, and be able to talk to him about certain issues of our life so that she could have guided him, hey, you know, don't do this. Sit down with them and let them know how important certain things are. But then in the end, he didn't recognize where he had been placed. Mm -hmm. And because of that, he lost it. And he lost the blessings that comes with it. Not only that, but it raised havoc. You think his brother is the one who stole it from him, but he first gave it to the brother before the brother could have had that advantage. So for all of us, let us be mindful. We are God's firstborns. He is counting on us to show his beauty forth. And so when we go anywhere and we behave anyhow, we have really brought him to shame. And the world will look at us and say, is, is this Christianity? Mm. Is this how God is? Then I don't want to be part of it. May Mercy. God help us. So that we will recognize who we are and be able to work with the as first ones. Amen. 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 It's a serious business. Just you know, hearing you know the dimensions, more to be that you're looking at. That even even if we're not looking at it from the actual chronology of our family order, you're saying even as Christians, we are God's firstborn. Very deep, more to be. God bless you so much, First Lady Sheila. Mama Debbie says we are God's firstborns, and firstborns have a higher responsibility. What are your thoughts on that as well? I think I agree perfectly with Mommy. I mean, yes, it's very relevant because, as Mommy said, it comes with privileges. I know in the Old Testament, if you were a firstborn son, you were given special authority, you were given honor. 
It comes with managing your family's inheritance. I mean, when they are sharing inheritance, you get a double portion and all that. It comes with all those privileges and also comes with responsibilities. And again, I would say no. No, because even though it comes with all these advantages, it depends on whose hands it's in. It depends on whose hands it's in. It depends on how you make it. You can be the firstborn. You can have the, uh, that, that birth order, but it depends on how, what you make of it. If it is either relevant or irrelevant, depending on you, the individual. In the case of um, Esau, even though he was the firstborn, he made it very, very irrelevant. Because at the end of the day, the blessings that were supposed to come to him did not come to him. I tell people that our destinies are in our own hands. Your destiny is in your own hands because you can be born anyway and yet excel, yet succeed. You can be the last and the most unregarded. Look at David. When Prophet Samuel came to anoint him, he, he was even forgotten because he was the last boy in the bush. It depends on what you make of your birth order. It depends on you. It's all in your own hands. Somebody will be will, will have all the privileges, everything, finances, all the resources, and yet mess up their life. And someone who does not have anything, does not have any backing at all, wants to succeed and take steps to succeed. So yes, it is relevant, but it depends on whose hands that birthright is very very interesting dynamics to the birth order right and when you bring david into the conversation it, it gets to be very interesting and then comes the question of divine so mama Dabi, let's eat into what first lady sheila was saying she says it depends on you is there an unknown factor let's bring in the divine element because let me bring the scripture even to add to the conversation and then we begin to look at what happens right so genesis chapter 48 13 to 20 and ivy says and joseph took both of them ephraim on his right towards israel's left hand and manasseh on his left toward israel's right hand and brought them close to him verse 14 of genesis 48 but israel reached out his right hand and put it on ephraim's head though he was the younger and crossing his arms he put his left hand on manasseh's head even though manasseh was the first one. then he blessed joseph and said may so it's very interesting that the dynamics are we see the first and we see the younger and something is going like he says may god whom my fathers abraham and isaac walked faithfully the god who has been shepherd all my life to this day the angel who has delivered me from all harm may he bless these boys may they be called by my name and the names of my fathers abraham and isaac and may they increase greatly on the earth so it's so interesting then joseph intervenes verse 18 joseph said to him no my father this one is the first one put your right hand on his head but his father refused and said i know my son i know he too will become a people and he too will become great nevertheless his younger brother will be greater than he and his descendants will become a group of nations he blessed them that day and said in your name will israel pronounce this blessing may god make you like ephraim and manasseh so he put ephraim ahead of manasseh what be let's look at the divine hand the first lady sheila says your destiny is your own hand. And uh, Jacob says, look, Father, what, what, what do you think you're doing? And uh, Joseph, you know, it's, Joseph said to his dad, what are you doing? And he says, I know. More, David. Okay. Yeah. Um, as Mama Sheila had said, you know, um, we are all born 
and each and every one comes with certain, I would say, nature versus nature. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you are raised in an environment, you are nurtured in an environment, but deep within you, there is a, a characteristic, they'll say a personality, you know, a, a character trait, a quality in you that sometimes when the parents are able to sit back, they can be able to see and know that no, this may be my third born or my fourth born is very unique. And so sometimes what they do is that they encourage that personality. Maybe they've tried so very much with the first one to try and guide and all that. Normally, I wouldn't say all first ones, but sometimes, you know, the first who opens the womb is the one who is being cherished here and there. And, you know, she is the, uh, and he is the first one. So they are normally, but then you go into some families, you find that the first one who came in, because he's a guy, there's a sibling rivalry between the father and his own son. <laughs> so mom is lifting up this baby boy and playing with it, and dad is jealous. And it creates right. all kinds of situations, you know? So when you look at this, you can find that our, our qualities, our personalities also play a part with the way God blesses, God leads, and God guides us. Because even when you look at this same, you know, uh, Jacob, and you look at him even in line with his own children, look at Reuben, and then look at the situations that came. With Reuben is supposed to be the first one who is supposed to inherit. Mm -hmm. And then we, have, we look at Joseph too, and Ephraim and Manasseh. So I think what he did was that Jacob saw some qualities, you know, in the younger one compared to the older one where he knew that this younger one will be great he said the old people they observe they sit back and they are observing the children they are watching the characters and all that two people raised in the same home or four people raised in the same home yet each and every one of them the personalities are different because god god did not make them the same but with the different personalities what he did is he brought them into an environment to see whether you know how they will be shaped how they can be able to adjust themselves so that they can be the people he wants them to be mm -hmm. and so when our parents sit back grandparents sit back they are able to discern uh, by by the wisdom of god that no this younger one will be great david look his parents didn't even descend they forgot about him mm -hmm. they forgot about him they were looking at the warriors and they forgot about the one who has authority over the family's inheritance? He is mm. the one guarding the family's inheritance, the sheep. Because if he wasn't that great, they wouldn't have put the sheep in his care. Yet they had forgotten that it's the father saw something in David. That's why he gave him the sheep to take care of. Mm. And yet he had forgotten that somebody who has the family wealth and heritage in his hands is a capable person who will be able to, you know, be a king. So may God help us to discern as parents and may God help us also to encourage. Because sometimes when you see the weaknesses of some of your children, if you are not careful, you just, with revelation, you just throw it off, oh, this child is like this. But I believe that that is why God brought him to us. He brought that child to us so that we could, as best as we could with prayer, with encouragement and all that, see how best we can be able to shape that life so that that life will be a blessing. He will be able to do what God wants him to be. He may be a firstborn, uh, but there's a thirdborn who has that wisdom and who has that grace, but yet we will not throw him out, the firstborn out with the bathwater, thinking mm -hmm. that it doesn't matter. Because who knows, one day, one day, you never know, that firstborn you threw out will be the salvation of the family. May the Lord strengthen us and grant us discernment so that we can know how to handle the blessings of children we have been given. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. The parental role, so powerful. Mama Debbie, thank you for looking at it. And we pray for grace. It's such an important and very uh, difficult place to be as a parent to get it right. But with God as our helper, 
we will do the job and do it to the glory of God. Thank you so much. I want to take acknowledgement. This is today's one COPS radio. We are on here with you Mondays, 3 p.m. Eastern time. We've been here four years and, and still here strong. So thank you to our people who are always sharing for us. We love you. We appreciate you. If you're on here, please share it to your WhatsApp group. Everybody is part of a birth right. Every person is part of a birth order. This conversation is relevant to all of us. So share our link and let it be a blessing. You can subscribe to us on YouTube. You can subscribe to us on Facebook and every single time. But I want to know, um, there's a survey. Let, let me share the link so that people will start to uh, join in, in the survey. So um, you can just, you know, scan it and, and just vote. Let us know. We are, we are asking a question about your birthright. Uh, what is the impact to you? Your birth order. Are you the first? Are you the last? So go ahead, scan it, answer the question. And it will. it's anonymous. It won't show your name, but we, we will show it on here as, as goes. We want to know the people who are on here. Where are you? If you, you can tell us also, you can put it in the chat room and say, I'm the first, I'm the third, I'm the last one. Let us know. So we want to know from our people who are watching us what you think also. So you can scan it or you can go there and you can just type your answer. But we want to generate some instant, you know, responses and see how it's going. So, yes, it's in uh, in the, in, you know, on Facebook, you just uh, type it uh, and click on it and then answer the question and we'll generate some results. So say hi, say hello, let us know where you're watching us from. And I'm more interested in what is your breath order? <laughs> Uh, let's see the first one association, the middle child association, the last ones. Let us know. And of course, we have the fourth ones that for some large families, right? My husband is from a seven member family. So somebody said, I'm, a, I'm the seventh born. What about those who say, I'm the tenth born? <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, right? Say hi. I see Auntie Helen Brody. Thank you. Always sharing for us. We love you for it. Hello, our amazing intelligent mothers. God bless you. God bless you too. Yes, my dear husband is here. I appreciate you so much. He says, wow, Beth order. I am the first. And you don't want to know the responsibilities that came with. <laughs> and of course, you know, we have our baby last. So yesterday, you know, Pastor is doing some series of teachings and, um, it's talking about kingdom values that we should have. And, you know, as he's teaching, you can ask a question. If you have a comment, you can make a comment. So uh, one of our deaconesses made a comment that Pastor is a very humble leader. He sees him sweeping and all that. And, you know, Pastor doesn't take compliments too well. So it's like, oh, she's putting me on the spot. Well, Miracle decides to describe her dad. She says, her dad can cook. He's a mechanic. <laughs> So I'm like, can you imagine? <laughs> it, it was so funny. But you know, I, I was absorbing it all and I'm like, look at that. You know, he's not identified by his preaching. It's more of a one-on-one. -on -one. So the kid sees the daddy who cooks, sees the daddy who takes care of mechanical issues. And I'm thinking the first thing is my dad is the preacher. No, she says he cooks. And he's a mechanic. Can you imagine that? Amazing. So, yes. So, <laughs> I guess the birth order responsibilities has made him a multi, <laughs> multi person. It's good to see you, Minister Petra. She says, Greetings, beloved. Greetings to you also. And she's laughing along with us. Uh, tell us your birth order if you're on here. We want, we want to take a consensus. But Minister Petra says, Encouragement is so important. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. And okay, let's see. <laughs> she says, I am the second one. <laughs> so I guess if you answer, oh, and then she said, Amen, miracles is awesome. If you answer the second one, tell us the list of where you fall second. So I'm the first of two. So tell us where you are because we, we want to see how it's going. Say hi, say hello. Let us know where you're watching us from. Uh, Mama, we go is having some technical issues, but. Um, uh, yeah, they, they, they are having serious uh, internet issues. We'll see if we can call her, you know, as the discussion is going on. First Lady Sheila, back to you again. You started with your destinies in your hands, and now we are seeing uh, dynamics where Joseph is saying, Daddy, Ephraim and Manasseh, why are you giving the blessings of the first one to the younger one? And he says, I know this is why, what it's got to be. The divine hand in birthright and birth order. First Lady Sheila. Yeah, I think that 
um, divine plays a role in birth order. We were having a discussion some other time about God's will. And um, the preacher man said that when God says something about you, he ensures that that thing comes to pass. Mm. When he wants to do something with you, come rain or shine, you may try to run, but at the end of the day, the will of God will be done in your life. And I ask this question that if God insists that his will in our life be done, then on what basis are we going to be judged? Mm -hmm. Are we going to be judged because we run around instead of walking straight and allowing God to have his will? Or because at the end of the day, your will came to pass. So on what basis am I being judged? And everybody was laughing, but that was that was what I thought at that moment. But one thing I've realized is that God's will for our lives, it will come to pass regardless. Let's look at this man, Jonah. Jonah tried to run away from God's call. He did all he could. But at the end of the day, exactly where God wanted him to be, that was where he landed. Even though the path was rough, he had to go through the will. But at the end of the day, the will dropped him exactly <laughs> on the land where God had ordained for him to be. Mm. So when God decides to do something with you, when God gives you a birthright, I believe that his will ultimately comes to pass in our lives. Yours is to just obey and allow him to do what he wants to do with you. You, you may run away, but if he wants you to fulfill it, you will fulfill it. Sometimes too, sometimes we don't give God the chance to do what he wants to do with us. And those ones, sometimes it ends in disasters. It ends in disasters because you can't fight God. No man fights God and prevails. You will try to fight God, but you would hurt yourself. Let's look at um, who was the one who I have forgotten about his name, but he tried to wrestle with, he wrestled with God. He wrestled and wrestled and wrestled. God, I, I thought that God just entertained him. He just wanted him to flex his muscles so he knows that he also has strength. But, mm -hmm. but God just touched his socket. He didn't even push him over. Just a touch of his hands dislocated him. So if God really intended to knock him down, he wouldn't have lasted even a second. So my, my, my point here is that the hand of God is in birth rights. Mm. And when he wants to do it, he will do it with you. So just allow him. There's no fighting. Just allow him. Mm, mm, mm. Very, very powerful. God bless you. Very powerful. I want us to take a listen at something and then we'll, you know, join the discussion. Thank you. It's, it's interesting. This conversation is going to go on and go on and go on, but that is true. Sometimes God would just direct you and redirect you, even if you try to stray. God bless you, firstly, Sheila. Let's take a listen to something. You leave home with your birth order, and your birth order has an awful lot to do with how you see life, the profession you choose, the person you marry. Firstborn children are natural leaders, they're achievers, they're the ones that go out there and do it in life for sure. In gender, the firstborn daughter is many times a pleaser. The male counterpart is much more into control. And then you look at that second child, that middle child in a family of three, for example. The middle child is opposite of what's ever above them in the family. In the business world, your CEOs are firstborn children. Your entrepreneurs come from the middle of the pack. Uh, Donald Trump has done fairly well in life. Middle child, Donald Trump. Okay. Bill Gates, Microsoft, middle child. Hadn't done too shabby either for a college dropout. Steve Forbes, Forbes Magazine, Forbes Enterprises middle child of the family. So don't write off those middle children. Then there's the little schnookies of the family, the babies of the family. Check this out. Billy Crystal, Eddie Murphy, Goldie Hawn, Drew Carey, Jim Carey, Martin Short, Chevy Chase, Steve Martin, Whoopi Goldberg, Ellen DeGeneres, John Stewart, 
Steve Carell. Have I impressed you enough? All what? Babies of the family. Think of your family, the family you grew up in. What adjective could you give to your firstborn brother or sister or the middle child or the baby in the family? You see, there is a distinct personality that's associated with every child in your family. Interesting dynamics. And <laughs> I was reading the book, it, you know, a lot of research, even CNN did a research about birth order. And uh, so many, you know, theorists uh, have spoken about birth order. But it, it's very interesting to me just to see that people have spent time to research characteristics of the firstborn, the middle child, the lastborn. And they are looking at it and they are saying, look, most of the time, some people might break away from it, but, you know, a lot of the times you, you cannot avoid it. And I was, <laughs> I was reading the book and I'm like, hmm, this one is so true, but this one I disagree. So the whole time, that's what I'm doing. And uh, Dr. Kevin Lehman is very known uh, with that birth order. You know, he, he spent so many years doing that research and he's, he, he, very interesting thing, he says that when he goes into a group, he just tries to look at the crowd and begins to isolate who is the firstborn, who is the middle child. And most of the time, he says nine out of 10, he's correct because of the way firstborns behave, the way middle kids behave and so forth. Mama Debbie, what are your thoughts about that classification and grouping? Uh, I would partially agree with him and I would also not. Mm -hmm looking at the fact that nature also plays a part. Yes. That's what I say. Nature plays a bit. And normally, I, I know that a lot of people who have a firstborn, they pour into that firstborn. Mm -hmm. Because the firstborn is the beginning of the image of the family. You know, so the, the child may have certain traits, like you're saying, but because of the nurturing part as well, it gives them the desire to want to excel. They want to be the first in so many things. So I, I think that aspect also plays a part. That's why he has been able to notice that. So you see, when he goes into a group, he will look at the personality and the tendencies of the child and be able to think that this is a firstborn. But deep within, they didn't know how, you know, what emphasis and what things were put in there to be able to lift up that personality of that first one because that first one must succeed. Second born is normally always wrestling because he's not the first and he wants to be known. He wants to be seen. So normally you can see that the second bonds normally, you know, things are a little tough for them because they also want to be seen. The first one is after all the show of the family and the second one has to struggle. Third one, huh? You know, I have made these two older siblings, and because of that, you know, for me, I just fall here and I just fall there. It's not such a big deal. And that is where, if you're also looking at it, you can also see in the names of the people he mentioned who are normally actors and entertainers and all those, you know, because the third one is, you know, he just like a day's down, relaxing in the family here, you will not fight with the first, you will not fight with the second. Normally, if there are three in the family, the first and the third normally are more closer. And it seems like the second one has to struggle to find their way. So I do agree with him somewhere, but I think that the, the nature also does play a part. Thank you so much, Mama Debbie. God bless you. Very interesting way to look at it. First Lady Sheila, mm -hmm. what were your thoughts when you listened to him also? Um, just like mommy said, I also agree and disagree. Um, he said that um, firstborns are normally natural leaders. And one thing I've realized is that um, firstborns, they have a lot of responsibilities. In um, families where low-income families, sometimes firstborns would have to work extra hard to support the rest of the family. So they have a lot of responsibility. And when they take up those responsibilities, it grooms them to take up leadership role. Where mother is not around, the firstborn daughter takes the role. So people look at them and see that natural leadership ability in them. But again, just as mommy said, it depends on nature. Because I have seen one firstborn who is worse than the last one. Mm. 
Mm. Yes. When they, they say yeah, he's a, you wouldn't even believe that he's the first one. You would think that he's the last one. So relaxed and like a daisy car, nothing seems to matter to him. And the younger siblings are forcing more than he is expected to. So nature um, also plays a role. And then um, when it comes to the first children, just as mommy said, it's pouring into them. In my case, for instance, my first girl got all my attention. I would sit her down. I taught her ABC. I was reading to her. I was pouring. So what I did with her, I go, I sit down and I go, like, if I had done that for the other two, I mean, I poured everything into her. Had the time, I'll take her out. I'll try to groom her. So I don't expect less from her because she's gotten all my time and attention. She learned to read early because of the time I invested in her. And when I, I, I compare her to this last one, she's struggling a little bit because now I'm having to share my time between um, the rest of them. So somebody will sit there and go like, oh, because, he, because of the birth order, that's why she's excelling. They don't know the investments that have gone into her so much has gone into her so if we are not comparing the investment vis-a-vis -vis and we go like oh because you're a first child you have to be a leader you have to excel we are we are making a mistake somehow look at the time and resources that has gone into her she used to have all anything she wants because i can afford it i, I don't have to buy three sets I will buy only one so my money can afford so i was giving her now when she's asking the last child is asking i need to apportion my resources between the three mm -hmm. so definitely they are at a, at a disadvantage and so if you come and tell me that oh the last child is not forcing like the first child i mean you you are not right because <laughs> look at what has gone into the first child. so we have to compare those things before we jump to a conclusion very, very interesting. And I like that. We agree to disagree, right? We see some aspects of it that are bullseye and some other aspects that there's more that goes into this. So thank you so much. I'm going to try to call Mama Abigail. We, we are having some technical difficulties with her connecting. We're going to try to call if it goes through fine and hopefully it does. So let, let me see if we get through. So go ahead and do the survey if you haven't done it yet, right? Tell us what, what is your birth order, what has done for you. I've already taken my... Okay, so we couldn't get through a while ago. <laughs> she has said that they're having serious connection issues in Ghana. We will try again and hopefully we make it. But if not, you know, we'll keep on. Yeah, it's not going Yeah. yeah so we're doing an international call and the networks are busy so we'll keep trying but let, let me bring something that he said <laughs> uh in the book the birth order by dr calvin he says so he's describing some characteristics he says a b c d a group of people he will not tell us who they are and so we look at the traits and then he says um this is the book i'm looking at it on the Kindle app this is a uh, page 18 of his book he says a perfectionist reliable conscientious a list maker well organized hard driving a natural leader critical serious scholarly logical doesn't like surprises a techie so that is a tech survey person that is a now b is a mediator Compromising, diplomatic, avoids conflict, independent, loyal to peers, has many friends, a maverick, <laughs> secretive, used to not having attention. Then C, this character is manipulative, charming, blames others, attention seeker, tenacious, people person, natural salesperson, precocious, engaging, affectionate, and love surprises. And says, D, little adult by age seven, very thorough, deliberate, 
high achiever, self-motivated, fearful, cautious, voracious reader, black and white thinker, <laughs> talks in extremes, can bear to fail, has very high expectations for self, more comfortable with people who are older or younger. So now let's see what he's saying. So he says, if you know that this just seemed rather easy because A, B, and C listed traits of the oldest right on down to the youngest in the family, he says, you are right. So if you picked A, it's a good bet. That is the first part. And he says, if you chose B, chances are you are middle-born, second-born, or third children, or possibly third-born or fourth. Now, he says, if C seems to relate best to who you are, it's likely you are the baby in the family. <laughs> but let, let me bring this that he was saying. He says, bird order continues to be revealing when you look at who is in what occupation. For example, statistics show that firstborns often fill positions of high authority or achievement. And then he says, who is who in America or American men and women in science? Both contain a high percentage of firstborns. So there's been a, a research about who is who in America. And the, the research is showing that the highest percentage are firstborns. And then you, you also find them well represented among Ross scholars and university professors. They've done their survey. But then he comes and says, the firstborn, the firstborn child in the family, a firstborn child may not always play a firstborn role. And then he said, the first child of that gender born in the family the first son or the first daughter. So there are so many things that are showing, but let me bring this very interesting thing. As for presidents and pastors, a great number of them are firstborns. So he says, the way I define a firstborn, 28 out of the 44 US presidents, 64% have been firstborns or functional. They play the role of firstborns. Eight out of 11 who ran for president in 2008 election were first sons or a firstborn daughter in the family. So it's very interesting how he's looking at it. And we, we don't have the time to go into it, but he brings all the statistics, all the research that he talks to us about the middle born, right? So the middle borns are living in sort of anonymous haziness. Remember that you mentioned it. And then he, he goes on to... But the CNN research that happened is so interesting to say that the first ones had higher IQs. A. And then <laughs> he comes to the last ones and, and, and so forth and so forth. So, and then Hollywood, as for Hollywood, the last ones are the actors. So it's very interesting that all these research is there. Uh, we have Mama Abigail on the line. Mama Abigail, how are you doing, Mommy? By God's grace, you're doing well, and we know you're having some technical difficulties, so it's good that we have you on the line, and the conversation has been very interesting. Uh, first of all, uh, I am a firstborn. Mama Debbie says she's the fourth. First Lady Sheila says she's the third. Mommy, where are you on the chronological order of birth in your family? <laughs> Mommy says she's a proud last born. Interesting. But looking at firstborn, um, from your perspective, uh, looking at the last born, the middle child, birth order in general, what, what would you say about it? Very well, and even controlling some of us sometimes. 
Very, very powerful. God bless you, Mama Abigail. Uh, definitely, we'll, we'll let you go for a bit. And we'll try to call in again uh, for you to weigh in. But thank you and God bless you, Mommy, for sharing your pr personal experiences with us. Oh, wow. We pray for grace. Yeah, we pray for grace. Thank you, mommy. God bless you. Yeah, so we'll try, mommy, again. Uh, internet problems, well, well, you know, widely over there. But we're today's woman. We we work with whatever. So we'll definitely try to call mommy again and, you know, get a hold of her and try to look at it. But it's, it's very interesting to look at where we are coming from right what the bible says we are and also just knowing that you know but i i like that there is a research i like the fact that people have been deliberate they've taken the time they look at it they have factors that are coming in and and i like that the more i read the book it it goes into the nurture and nature aspect of it why it's not just saying these are people who behave like this but then it says um, the typical, again, the typical firstborns are usually easy to recognize. They're almost always neatly dressed and well-groomed. The last ones, they are the ones still hanging around, talking by the porch bowl at the back of the room. And they haven't even realized I've started to speak. So he's talking about when he goes into a group, a group to give a lecture. He, that's how he's learning. The middle children are the hardest of all to identify because they've learned to negotiate that middle ground so successfully that the lines of who they are can become blurred, depending on which other birth orders they are spending time with. And then he says, <laughs> so I, I, I'm just reading it for the fun of it. And some of it, of course, I agree with some I don't, but at least it's good that some of the things are, you know, the, and then he goes to sh talk about the roles of the parents, right? Why these things are happening. And Mama W, you said it, and in first thing she said, you said it too, about the fact that parents also invest so much into, you know, these children. Um, let's take some acknowledgements and then we'll come. Well, the survey is going on, so go ahead. It's in the chat room. You can copy the link. Let me bring that. And then, because I, I want to see the people who are on here, what you're saying about, yes, so this is the link. You can go ahead, you can scan it, you can answer the questions. Uh, tell us three things you think that whatever your birth order is, the three influences you, you've seen because of your birth order. And let's engage the conversation. So we are doing our own, right? So he's done his research. We are doing ours right here, right? <laughs> Minister Petra said, my God, so true, amen. And then Auntie Monica, which is good to see you. She says, praise the Lord, mothers, praise the Lord to you. If you're on here, tell us, what are you? Uh, are you a one among six, one among two, one among five? Or which is your birth order? 
go ahead and share it with us. We are having fun with this topic. And to Anastasia Taylor, good to see you. That is the mommy of Elder Dr. Sam Esahio, our COP is the radio manager. That is the mom. She looks fabulous, not looking like a person who <laughs> says C16. Hey, this topic is very, very interesting. Absolutely, mommy. Where are you on the Oh, we have <laughs> Uncle Nanami said he's just laughing about the whole thing. Some of it, you know, are true, others are not, you know, so it's very interesting. So, but whatever it is, we are children of God and we are the firstborns of Christ. In Christ Jesus, we are God's firstborn. I am the firstborn, absolutely. Firstborn gang, firstborn association. <laughs> We are here, right? <laughs> and Bobby is just, you know, laughing along. It's, it's been interesting. Let me bring another uh, another video for us to listen to. And, you know, we'll, we'll go into that uh, as we go along. Because I, I want us to hear all these people who say, look, this is their research. This is how long they have spent the time to come up with issues of our birthright. But for me, even if we disagree or agree, that bringing this conversation up, provoking us to look at something that is unique to all of us. All of us are on this. This is, it's not one of those things we say, this is far away from us. Whatever you do, you are part of a family. There's the family tree and you, you fit in one order or the other. But this conversation is pushing us to ask the question, why are some of my siblings this responsible? They have this trait. They have this characteristics. What is the Bible saying about who I'm supposed to be? And then we wake up. So the conversation on today's woman is always supposed to provoke an outer conversation for you to incorporate what you need to incorporate and to throw away what you need to throw away. Again, we are children of God. And with God, all things are possible. I want us to take a listen at this next one and we'll see whether we agree or disagree and continue to see what the Bible says about our birth order and our birth rights. What do these three men have in common? Warren Buffett, American investor, Carlos Slim, Mexican business mogul, and Microsoft co-founder Bill Gates. Well, according to Forbes Billionaires List 2015, this is a three wealthiest, richest men in the world. But the, interesting fact that I'd like to get your attention to that all three men also middle children. And the birth order habits that they have developed in their childhood played a significant role in turning them into successful business giants they all became. Just to illustrate my point, let's think about Bill, Bill Gates when he was a little boy when he was in the backyard. He saw the ball he wants to play. He's running after the ball. But then his big sister, Christy, grabs the ball first. So what happens with Bill? He waits patiently. Does he? In the meantime, his youngest sister, Libby, starts crying, Mommy, Mommy, they never give me the ball to play. So what Mommy does, Mommy asks Christy to give the ball to the Libby. So does Bill pout? Does he run back to his room to work on his master plan to build the largest software company in the world? Well, in his case, maybe. <laughs> but what he learned as a middle child, you can see he learned he had to share things. And if you have to share things, you're habitually learning and developing the habit of becoming a master negotiator. So don't tell me that Bill Gates didn't use that skill when he was willing and dealing at the corporate level to become as successful as he is. So both other habits, these personality habits that we have developed in our childhood, they live with us to this very day. They determine relationships that they were built, they determine how we communicate. But the problem is, the problem is that research shows that almost half of the day 
almost half of the day we spend on the autopilot of our habits. But the birth order habits, type of the habits that we are not aware of, we are not aware of, we don't recognize. One of the reasons because we learn them in their childhood when our brain has not been developed yet. It's like, you know, we, we learn our native language. We don't remember how we learn our native language, but we use it in the same with the birth order habits. We use them on the autopilot. And it's very critical to understand and become aware about birth order habits because every habit has its blessing and has its curse. And they can propel you to success, but also can destroy your success, your business, and destroy your relationship. So let's go through four, four types, uh, firstborn, middle, youngest, and the only child. We touched on the middle already, so let's talk about the firstborn. Before I talk about the first one, I'd like to give you very important information about the latest research, how many days it takes to develop a habit. 66 days. So if you'd like to develop a habit, 66 days. So as a child, it takes less than three months, basically, to repeat the same behavior, and then you have a habit that you carry for the rest of your life. So think about the firstborn. When the firstborn comes to life, they kind of, they're only children. They're like gods. But then they got demoted to kings and queens after <laughs> their sister or brother came in. With, uh, they didn't have any choice in that matter, but the life dramatically changed. Because now parents asking them suddenly, you have to be responsible. You have to be responsible. And what does it what does it teach us if you're the firstborn? You have to be responsible. They tell, well, help your brother to get dressed. Help your sister, look after your sister in the, uh, in the playground. So you're becoming a responsible leader and you carry those habits all your life. If you look at there, almost 64% of the U.S. presidents, according to a birth order guru, Dr. Le uh, Kevin Lemon, they're firstborns or functional firstborns. If you think about the top, top 10 most powerful women in the world, five out of them, they're firstborns. But of course, there is a blessing, it's your power, but then there is a curse. And the curse is, when firstborns speak, they, sp uh, they usually speak with quite intensity, with conviction. It's like a Chuck Norris, you know, another firstborn. And in one of his movies, you know, those receiving information from Chuck Norris, you know, they immediately put in defensive and they kick in the face. <laughs> well, in business meetings, firstborns, they do not assault you, assault you physically, but the tone of voice and intensity may cause room to shut down. So if you are a firstborn and you become mindful about this habit, you can manage your power so your employees, your co-workers, your family members, they feel more comfortable, speak up and share their ideas, you know, and have more teamwork, that's what you want. So let's speak about youngest. When the youngest showed up, usually parents get tired a little bit. So what happens with the rules? Rules got more relaxed. So the youngest allowed, without too much punishment, to take more risk, to think innovatively, creatively, you know, and to think out of the box. So no wonder that Frank, Dr. Frank Soloway in his book, Born to Rebel, he started scientific revolutions and he said 23 out of 28, they're led by the later ones. One of the examples, the youngest of four, Nicholas Copernicus, who said something like this in the 1500s, hey guys, I know it sounds crazy, but guess what? The planets, they do not revolve around the earth, as tradition tells us, they revolve around the sun. He was a revolutionary, and that's what the youngest are good at, with King David. If you know his story, he didn't use any traditional armor. He was thinking outside of the box and was a courageous risk taker. He fought with a sling and five rocks with a mighty Goliath, and he won. That's what the youngest great with. And that's the birth order habit that they carry 
and makes them great. Well, there is, always, there is also a curse. What's the curse for the youngest? They make decisions sometimes too impulsively without thinking it through. Just give you one example. General Douglas MacArthur, who is actually famous for saying, you're remembered for the rules you break. When, uh, during the Korean War, during the Korean War, he started to antagonize Chinese without consulting foreign policymakers in Washington, D.C. He was breaking rules. Well, probably in his childhood, he didn't get as much corner time, and that's why he was taking too much risk. But, you know, in real life, you have to pay the price. So the President Truman fired him for, for insubordination and for, for his impetuous behavior. So as you can see, the birth order, birth order habits, they're very critical to be mindful about and to be clear because they have, they give us strengths, they give us talents, but also they give us shortcomings. <laughs> Interesting, right? We, we have to take some deep breath in. Mama Debbie, go ahead. Yeah, I do agree with some of the things he's saying that certain traits and even with Lehman, I do. But uh, the only other area I was going to add is uh, that area of, like we say, in the nature, the, like you said, he also added it to it that parents play a part and then the person's personality also plays a part. Because my husband is a firstborn to his mom and there are certain qualities that is being listed that that's who he is. And you he's know? a pastor. He's a pastor too. And they're saying yeah, most words yeah, are pastors. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So I, I do I do agree with you know some of the you know or quite quite a lot of the things they are saying. But I just wanted to factor in that let us also consider uh, that aspect as well of as to you know because like I said if if there is a firstborn who is pampered and he's not given enough responsibility. Sometimes the firstborns could be an only child. Yes. Uh -huh. And then the only child, sometimes you see that if, if, you know, especially since they waited so long for him and then he came or she came, they can do no wrong. And so any little son, eh, eh, then we run for, you know, so then you see that in so doing, even though you are pushing, the child is your, your image of the family, but things are a little more slower mm -hmm. because of the way that, you know, they were raised, you know, so, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> I do agree with most of what they are saying. And I'm going to watch, because I'm also a middle child, right? So I'm going to watch certain <laughs> things. <you know? laughs> see where I fall in and see how best to adjust myself also to be, you know, uh, to be able to achieve what God wants me to achieve. Because I am his first one, even though I'm in the, I'm the fourth out of six children. And so for me, like the fourth, it was like, oh, you know, here I am. You know, even though I had also a, a spirit of determination where when I make up my mind, I wanted to do something, I will push it through. I, it was more like, your voice is not heard because you are the fourth. Mom used to go, we are two sisters. So mom would take my big sister weddings and all that. Here I am, I'm falling among the three boys. And because of that, I'm climbing the trees mm -hmm. and I'm joining the boys to go fishing and all those kind of stuff. And I'm being told over and over again, look, you are not a boy, you are a girl. You know, so, <laughs> but here I am, I'm wearing the shorts and I'm doing all the things that, because I was, and because of that too, probably it also gave me that spirit of determination. Because mm -hmm. wherever they are going, I'm determined to go with them. Right. I also thought I can do this and I can do that. Yeah, so I do agree with a lot of what they are saying. I do agree with them. Yeah. God yeah. bless you so much, Wodewi. When you go back to the book, uh, Dr. Coven, and he's the, he's the most famous, you know, on birth order uh, in terms of those who are part of that theory. He says something to what you just said. He says, uh, this is page 57 of the book, if you're looking at it from the Kendo edition. He says, what's parenting got to do with altering birth order descriptions? He says, 
parental factors are powerful variables that affect each child in the family, but particularly the firstborn or the only child. <laughs> <laughs> he, he says, so just how does mom's or dad's order of birth affect the children? One typical force at work is the tendency for a parent to over-identify with the child in the same birth order position. This can lead to putting too much pressure on the child or spoiling or favoring the child. So very interesting for me that you, you are thinking along the same line. First Lady Sheila, what were your thoughts when you listened to him? And it was very interesting that you brought in David and you were talked about that, you know. Yeah. I, I kind of agree with him to a point. Um, he made mention of the fact that uh, middle children excelled when you use those three people, Bill Gates and all, that as middle children who have excelled. And he was saying that it's because um, they are in the middle, they are sharing things. When he said Bill Gates was sharing, and because of that, he took that habit into his business. It, it's kind of true, but sometimes, you know, um, older children or firstborns sacrifice a lot to make sure that the younger ones excel. So it's not because the middle child is always in the middle and sharing. Sometimes the older children give up things so that the middle children would excel. And I've seen that in so many families. When when things are not going well, it's you, the older person, who has to sit and make sure that the younger ones also have their um, privilege. I've had older people who had to drop out of school, help parents raise money to send the younger ones to school for the younger ones to excel and become the bosses that day the older children never got the opportunity to be mm -hmm. so that's also a factor it's not only because they're in the middle and they are sharing all those things sometimes it happens and sometimes too it's because the older ones give up things for the younger ones to excel and then he also said something that um habits are carried into adulthood is true it's very true i agree with it the habits that we form if you were a firstborn child and you are responsible now i don't see a reason why you grew up and you become irresponsible the things that you do now when you were young you carry it into your life so it's natural that the habits that you form growing up i mean it's with you and that tells on you so it's very true and then when you talked about david being the youngest and all that and young people are expected to relax and all that but i was kind of i mean it goes both ways and he was saying that david thought out of the box and then he used a sling and a stone it's true that was very unconventional but david went into that fight not going to fight by his own strength or knowing how to use the stone he knew how to use the stone obviously but david was inspired by something supernatural he was fighting for a god who he knew that come what may even if he did not pick a stone and he took just uh, a bottle of water he would have defeated Goliath because it was not by his might or by his strength because they don't understand why he would uh, allow somebody to come and defame a god he knew was very powerful and could defeat them so in that aspect yes most people wouldn't have thought of it, but well, maybe because he was the last one, he was using unconventional means. As <laughs> <laughs> some of the things he said were very, very true. And when he was talking, I this movie, Boss Baby, came to mind. I don't know if you've watched Boss Baby. Because what, of what, do you, what do you call it? Boss Baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Some of the kids, I, I I watched this with them. Mm -hmm. Boss baby was the only child up until um another child was brought in by the stock. And then when the other child came in, all the privileges that boss baby had. <laughs> now that when the child makes a little noise, the, the parents will run to him. And they stopped playing with Boss Baby, and then he decided to devise a means 
of kicking that young baby out of the house so that he can regain his position and his place as, as the first child. So when he was talking, it came to mind. I mean, these are some of the dynamics that, I mean, fair, um, birth order breaks to the, to the family. It's interesting you bring in boss baby because we see the sibling rivalry, right? <laughs> we also see the family dynamics, the bonds we have, the power of the family and the teaming of all of that. So that is very interesting uh, dynamics to, to bring on to the conversation. It, it's very interesting. We, we're going to look at the privileges, right, uh, of the birthright because um, the, the survey that we are doing, if you're just joining us, we, we are doing a survey. Go ahead and tell us what, what, what what is your birth order and it, it generates the responses instantly for us so for the people who responded uh in one word describe how your birth order has impacted you so so far we have 20 people who have responded somebody said it has made me strong somebody said tremendously loved somebody says made me amazing somebody says, it made me a leader made me privileged very responsible we have some other people agreeing with responsible somebody said what she would <laughs> so i don't know whether they are the last way <laughs> so they are the pumped ones who enjoy all the attention somebody said lazy my goodness really uh beautifully made me a disciplinarian and somebody said very resolved responsible so we have uh three people talking about responsibility and the one team with that in there there's the one who said they are strong and strong so very interesting uh go ahead and let's see what your thoughts are on that are looking at the privileges right um let me uh bring you on here because why was jacob in the esau story why did one want to buy the better right right so let's see if there are privileges to this bed order because the more of you had mentioned it even initially and even first initially like when we were describing the first one but let me go to the bible and look at the book of romans chapter 12 verse 6 it says in his grace this is an nlt god has given us different gifts for doing certain things well and before it begins to talk about what your gifts are to use it, but this assumption here, this, this particular scripture is very emphatic. It says, in his grace, God has given us. So it's like, it's just there. We all have been given different gifts for doing certain things well. It, it means nobody has been such, you know, if you think about it, none of us have been shortchanged. Nobody's without it we have been given gifts so uh, debbie let's look at the privileges that come with that why would somebody say i want to buy the birth right when another person thinks it's not very important what are the privileges that we can see and the constraints here okay um you can see that right from the beginning because god cherishes the firstborn and the normal circumstances that is what it is that mm -hmm. God cherishes the firstborn. And so parents, everyone knows that the firstborn is in a privileged position. Mm -hmm. Look at even the story of um, the prodigal son. When the second son demanded for his uh, blessings and he went and squandered it and came back and the dad treated him well, the firstborn complained. And then listen to the reply the father told him. He said, Look, everything of mine is yours. Everything that belongs to me belongs to you. So which means for firstborns, they have that blessing and that right that everything, they are the image of the family. And so because of that, that is the reason why Jacob wanted it. You see, the secret is that Jacob understood what it was all about. Meanwhile, Esau didn't. That's mm. why God will say that Esau is foolish. Mm because he didn't fully understand what it meant. And every firstborn who is born comes with a special grace. I believe that from mm -hmm. God. He chose that particular child to be the firstborn for a reason. And, 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 and that's where I also said that it, it, it behooves on us also as parents to be able to help our children to recognize that you were not just placed in any order for nothing. It doesn't mean we the second bonds, the third and the fourth. I know God has plans for us all. 
because all of us couldn't come at once. If you're having six children, even the six, there's a first one, the second one, you know, <laughs> couplets, they come in an order of a first to the, the six. So God has a plan for each and every one of us, but it behooves on the first one to also recognize that I was brought in for this particular reason as a first to usher in, you know, to, to, to lead the family so that my parents and the family can be able to rest and rely on me knowing that I'm a trendsetter. I'm supposed to lead the trend to the profit of the family. And so when a firstborn doesn't respect that order, it is very, very unfortunate. And normally, one thing I've noticed is that normally if a firstborn doesn't stand up to the, the responsibilities they have, if there is a third, a fourth, and a fifth, maybe the second may rise up, one mm -hmm. of them may rise up. But you see that some of them join that firstborn, and you find that it's very difficult for the family because the firstborn, you know, did not stand up to the position God chose to give him. It's a it's, it's God's choice. Mm -hmm. He chose to give them. So that is what I have noticed. And that's why I know there is blessings in being a firstborn. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, yeah, there are responsibilities, but there's a lot of, you know, extra blessings. So lift your head up high, first walls. Yes, and mommy. Follow you so mm. that we will also, you know, garnish and enjoy some of the, the blessings. The prodigal son's father said, look, everything I have mm. belongs to you. So let us remember that, you know, that right now in this day and age, it may not happen that way. But mm. I remember when I was young, when they were giving money, somebody comes in and they were going to bless, the first one will get, if the first one gets <laughs> $50, they'll share the rest of the 50 that's left to the rest of the children. <laughs> it was so unfair, right? But that is what it is. Mm. So when, when the first one recognizes his position and they walk worthy, then it will allow the family to be blessed. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. You know, it, it's kind of balancing it out because I think growing up being a first one, it was never fun, right? Because everything is like, oh, if something goes wrong, even if the younger one who did it, you are the one who has to answer for it. And, <laughs> and, and the younger ones also resent you because when mommy is not around, I want to put you in check because if something goes wrong, I would have to answer for it. And they tell you, you are not my mommy. And I'm thinking, well, I'll be in trouble for it. <laughs> So it, it, it's one of those scenarios, but you, you recognize that you get to baby your sibling. For me, I see it as you, you learn to be a mother, like you are the second mother of your sibling because you take care of them, you watch out for them. And that uh, you, we, we never maybe paid attention to it, but it's a good trait. So it's good to hear you, Mommy Debbie, say that. It, it's, it balances it out. <laughs> First Lady Sheila, uh, go for it. I think it's very true what mommy said. It's very, very true. The firstborn, I mean, they have a lot of responsibility. And I go like with every responsibility comes opportunities. If you play your role well, there are definitely opportunities and blessings that come along with it. And most mm. of the times I see my little ones fighting their older one. They go like, I mean, why does she get this? Why did they ask you, how old are you? Then she say for. How old is she? Then she say 10. I go like, so you want to get the same thing that she gets? No. She's older. And because she's older, there are privileges that goes with age. I tell her, when you go to that age, you also get that opportunities. But it, it comes with a lot of opportunities. Responsibilities goes with opportunities. So if you play it well, I mean, the opportunities will, will come. And one other thing that I've also realized is that, um, earthly speaking, just as mommy said, if you are older, you benefit a lot. When they are sharing something, your name comes first. You are the heir apparent to the throne if you, are, you, you happen to come from a, a royal family. Mm -hmm. And it's not an easy title. It comes with a lot of honor. That is why most people would target firstborns because it comes with honor. It comes with um, blessings, just as mommy said. I mean, when they are sharing something, the, if the first does not get, know that you are not getting it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, is, that is one um, privilege that comes with being a first. 
God bless you so much. Very interesting. So I think the first ones need to stop uh, worrying about the work and the responsibility because <laughs> it balances it out. Well, we have Mama Abigo too on the line. Mama Abigo, we are looking at privileges of the birth order. And the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12, verse 6, that in his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. It, it, it presupposes that we all have been given gifts. So we are looking at privileges. And our mommies have talked about the privilege of the firstborn, that in as much as it comes with responsibilities, also there are blessings and there's an honor attached to the firstborn. Mommy, what are your thoughts on the privileges of the birth order? Oh, yes, there are, there are Everything is yours. Mm. Thank you. 
God bless you, Marie. And yes, it, it's very powerful to hear all these dimensions. Uh, this conversation would have to so continue it. So before we let you go, uh, we will go ahead and take your clothes and Mama Abigail. God bless you so much for looking at it. Yes, there are blessings, but our mummies are just, you know, consistent saying you have to work for it or you lose those privileges. Mama Abigail, before you go, we'll take your clothes then as well. Amen. Very, very powerful. Thank you so much, Mama Abigail, and God bless you. Uh, definitely uh, have a blessed uh, night, and hopefully, uh, God willing, this week, hopefully the connection issues will be resolved, but we are glad you were still able to be part of the conversation. Thank you so much, and God bless you, Mama Abigail. Thank you, and good night to all of you. Good night, buddy. Bye. Oh, it's it's very powerful the discussion, right? And we thank God for the conversation and for the dimensions that are coming. Uh, definitely, this is a conversation that we're going to come back to continue because there are so many dimensions that if we're going to go into it, you know that. <laughs> yeah, there there are so many things we need to eat into uh, this topic. So let me take some acknowledgments, and I'll come to you first, Lady Sheila. But it, it's so powerful a discussion to have for us to wake up to some realities about our birth order, and also looking at whatever it is from the family tree in God. Who are we? And so it's very powerful just to even look at whatever it is. God also writes a different, you know, dynamics for us. So, yes, uh, <laughs> my son is saying he's watching it on the bike. Well, good for you. And he says, I'm a firstborn. You were first and you had the first and only child status for nine years before Miracle came to dethrone you. So <laughs> you, you enjoyed so much the privilege. Mm -hmm. And my dear husband said, Miracle says she's last born. Yeah. Yes, she's last month. But you know, when you, when you go back to Dr. Uh, Kevin Lehman's book, Miracle is also a first. So he goes into, and that, that one, one dimension that I like his book is, he was trying to look at when people say, I don't fit the profile, is because we are not looking at not necessarily the birth order, but the characteristics. So for a child like, um, he looked at the 
birthing space. So a child, if you have a child for five years before you have another child, that child who comes back may pick the characteristics of the first one because of the gap. And then he says, if there is a boy, only boys and a girl comes, she comes to get the privilege of the first one because she's the first of her kind in the family. I was looking at it, I'm like, hmm, it, it's very interesting. I, I like that. It's not just A, B, C, and D. I was looking at it. I, when I seen it, I said, Mama Sheila, it's true. We sacrifice a lot for the younger ones. Absolutely. But now it's good to know that all those sacrifices are not in vain, right? Because we are learning to be responsible so all those things that we're doing we may not have loved it but it's true you you realize and i i, I was when i was listening to it, i realized something that sometimes it doesn't matter that you're a woman but because you're a firstborn and you've, you've grown up taking responsibility being in charge being in control you find yourself in a setting and as soon as they there's chaos you kick in and you want to act and i remember finding myself in a situation where we were asked to volunteer Right, the leader was like, and it was a mixture of men and women. And the leader was like, well, who can volunteer to do this and that? And everybody was silent and I volunteered, but the man wasn't specific. He didn't want a woman to do it. He wanted a male to do it. And so when nobody volunteered and I volunteered, then it offended him. And then he was like, oh no, he doesn't want a woman to do it. And there was a man in the group who said he only had four daughters and he was very upset because he, he said, this is what he's fighting about, the status quo that tries to limit women. And he said, well, you just asked for somebody to volunteer. You were not specific about the gender. Why are you not? And I, I wasn't offended. It didn't bother me. I just felt like, look, they're asking somebody to do something and why not do it? But it brought some dynamics, right? Some stereotypes that the gender, you know, placement. So what is different from a male firstborn might be different from a female firstborn. However, we may all have shared the same upbringing. If you bring in characteristics, because you are a leader naturally, and if you go into some environments and you have people who are insecure, they have a problem with you being a woman leader. And I've experienced it. More than you were, you are affirming, so I throw it to you. It seems like you can relate. sense that you know uh, i was looking at what you said about if you've had a son for a while and you 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 have a daughter after some years you know that the, 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 the daughter comes to sometimes if the parents are not very careful they displace the son and the son ends up falling into the shadows <laughs> as if it doesn't matter at all and if you are not careful it could bring some rivalry Yes. In that sense, like that boss, boss baby, I would like to watch that movie, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, so so I, I believe that, like we said, God, I'll read the scripture, Colossians 1, 15 to 19, which goes to show that for by him all things were created. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is also head of the body, the church. And he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place mm. in everything. Mm. This is what the scripture is telling us. And uh, Mama Abigail said that, you know, God places each and every one of us in order. Yes. He is the God who, you know, with the best order, he is the one who will allow this one to come first, this one to come tenth, and all that. But the key thing is for us to recognize mm -hmm. that we have been given a will. Mama Sheila was saying it before, that somebody raised a certain question to do with, you know, that it's God who uh, sets all things up, that it doesn't matter what happens, by all means, God will be done. And then she also said, if you look at it, we have been given a will. Mm -hmm. And our will, if you don't submit your will to God, if if Job, or I will no, I will say that you know, if, if 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 Job submitted his will to God and Jonah, Jonah, if Jonah in the end when he was in the belly of the whale, if he said no, I'm not going to do it, I'm this and this and that, who knows? Maybe that would have been the end of Mr. Jonah. Mm -hmm. But because right in the belly of the whale, he mm -hmm. recognized that God is sovereign. 
Yes. And he repented. And that is what is expected of us all, as children of God, being the firstborn of, of Christ. You know, that if we recognize that we are his children and we even offend or we are stubborn or we are disobedient and we recognize when we have fallen and we repent, there is a second door for us. Because yeah. I, uh, I believe without a doubt that there are people who God has great plans for. Mm. But of course, they did not submit their will. That's why he's giving us a free will, you know. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to, for the devil to say, hey, you've made them like robots. You are protecting them this way and all that. So as a firstborn, if you submit your will to God, God will elevate you to the position where he has called you to be. Mm -hmm. As a firstborn, as a lastborn, mm -hmm. if you submit your will to God, he will bring you to where he has promised you to be. The king, mm -hmm. secret, secret is the submission of our will. Mm. Knowing that he has great plans for us and he's sovereign. When we do, we will not be like Eve who submitted her will to Satan. Mm -hmm. And we are still struggling till today. We, we will be like Jesus, who even though he was from high, you know, he had everything, yet he yielded himself. And through that, he was given a name that is above every name. That at the mention of his name, every me. It doesn't matter what. They bow immediately and they <laughs> declare that Jesus is Lord. May God help us to submit where we are, our will to him, so that we will be the people in the best order that God has set us in. We will be a glory and an mm -hmm. honor unto his great name. May God bless us. Amen. Very, very powerful. You know, it feels like this is a good point to wrap it up for today. And then God willing, next week we'll come to continue. But it's uplifting, you know, Mama Debbie, to, to, to see that when God comes into the factor and you bring God into the dynamics, it doesn't matter what has been, you know, he gives us a check as second chance, right? If any man is in Christ, behold, he's the new creature. Behold, all things have passed away. All things have become new. And I loved it that you were showing us that some people may have lost it because they did not surrender to God. But once we do, a new chapter is open for us. And that is uplifting. God bless you so much more, Debbie, to you know, give us such a good closing. Mama and Estina says, being her first one has made her very responsible. And, you know, we may not have paid attention to it, but it's so true. God bless you so much. Mercedes Sheila, all you wanted to say and your closing. God bless you, Mommy. You, you, you couldn't have said it better. <laughs> The, the scripture that you read is actually one of my favorite scriptures. And when I ponder over it, I realized that Jesus came to play the role as the firstborn of all creation. Mm -hmm. And that is what God expects us, you and I who have believed him, to also play that role as the firstborn of humanity. Everything we need to excel, everything we need to play that role is in our hands. Mm. As I always ask, what are you doing with what is in your hands? You know, the Bible tells us that God has a plan for us. And his plan and his purpose for us are meant to make us good and give us an expected end. But you also have a role to play in all of this. You know, your destiny, as I said, is in your own hands. Whether you were born first, whether you were born last. You know, I know that God unless birth order, but he's that same God who subverts birth order to make his will come to pass. Mm -hmm. So whether you are last, whether you are first, God is able to subvert it. The, 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 order, the line thing, as mommy said, is all you allowing God's will to come to pass in your life and mm -hmm. taking the steps that God has placed in your hands to make sure that you get to where God expects you to get to. Birth order is important, but it will be important like the way you make it. So just take hold of your faith and let don't I I I I, I don't like things being this being discouraged. I mean, I don't like being discouraged. I know that I serve a God who is able to do all things. I mean, way beyond what I can ever ask or think of. And so nothing and absolutely nothing can stop me. When I want to succeed, I know I will succeed. Mm -hmm. You know, the devil will try to throw things at you. You don't have this opportunity. You don't, 
you tell tell i mean close your ears to what the devil says i am i am a success i am victorious once i am in god and i'm a child of god nothing and absolutely nothing i am a force of nature i tell myself me i am a force of nature because i have god everywhere i get to come rain or shine the will of god for my life must come to pass absolutely and that is the mindset that we need to carry as children of god so that whether we were born first or we were born last we would be able to fulfill our god-given destiny that's the most important because i tell people that on that judgment day every opportunity that you got and did not make use of you will account for it you will account for it so don't let me end here <laughs> account for every opportunity that god gave us god is expecting you to succeed you. God is expecting to excel. He said he created us for his glory. When we succeed, God becomes happy. When people look at your life and you're, you're succeeding, they see the glory of God in you and they give glory to God. And God is happy. God is happy. So, I mean, let us take that opportunity and make God happy. Get to where God has ordained us to. God bless you. <laughs> I could feel the passion. I, I just can't. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's beautiful. I mean, it, it's it's amazing. We, we've had a very great discussion, a very powerful discussion, where we are saying, look, there are some things that are beyond our control, which is whatever order you come in, God has already, he's, he's a God of principle. He works with hierarchy, and he is also a sovereign God. He can bypass whatever order to do whatever he does. However, your birth order is your birth order. When you're saying respect where God has positioned, you and understand that he has plans for your life one of those scriptures that we have said it over and over but i know the plans i have for your life they are not of evil of good to take you to an expected end so at that point and then he says he's given us all gifts however for whatever reason he chose to make you the first the second the third the last it comes with a privilege and we we couldn't have said it better. Embrace that privilege. Understand who you are in Christ. And we said, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made, right? And then let's bring that scripture that says, we are God's workmanship. We are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. So you realize that regardless of what whoever says, when we bring it to the mirror of God's word, we are elevated because our destiny is beautiful. And what we are also looking at is, yes, there's a family tree. Parents have a responsibilities. Children have responsibilities. But look at what the Bible talks about, Joseph. And we, we, we read that. But let me come to uh, Moses and Aaron. In the book of Exodus chapter 6, uh, chapter 7, 6 to 7, NIV, Moses and Aaron did just as the Lord commanded them. Moses was 80 years old and Aaron 83 when they spoke to Pharaoh so beautiful the first and the last but the last was the leader no yes um aaron is older yes yeah, so we are looking at the first and the last he is older yet the younger is supporting him but we see a very powerful dynamics here the leader does not speak very well but he has the leadership skills the younger one can speak very well but then he has a leader's exposure because he's been trained under the pharaoh so he has leadership, nurture, nature combined. So it doesn't matter. He, he uh, Aaron is defying the birth order, being the spokesperson. The younger one is de defying the birth order, being the leader. But they work together and it's beautiful. So whatever it is, there's a reason we belong to the family that we belong to. And it's been powerful. Let me take these acknowledgements as we end it. So today we say, tell us, are you the firstborn? I am gang firstborn. And I'm married to a firstborn. And even in our dynamics, we are so different. My husband mm -hmm. ran away from taking a leadership position, but he's more conscientious than me. He's more organized than I am. He's a perfectionist. I'm always, and I'm like, hey, let it go, right? But I realize that when I'm in a place, if you don't like strong women, you're not going to like me because I will take leadership. It's natural with me. I haven't thought about it till, till I started to read this, that if you're looking for a leader, you'll find me. So if you don't like strong women, you're never going to get along with me. And I have a firstborn who is like, you, you compliment him. He can't even take a compliment. So we get it. The dynamics are different, yet you see the strength 
you see the character. You see that give him something, he'll do it very well. And then we have our younger ones too. So it doesn't matter, as our mummies have said, God is God. And once we allow him, it's going to be beautiful. I've enjoyed this conversation so much. And I'm just wanting all the people who have been here, if you're a couple, sit down with your wife and talk about it. These children that we are raising, the first, the middle, the last, where are we leading them? It's been very powerful. Um, Mama Enestina says, firstborns carry special grace. So she agreed with Mama Debbie, what you were saying. God bless you, Mama Debbie. And my dearest husband says, <laughs> hope next week you will talk about the discipline we received as firstborns. <laughs> In my circumstance, twice, it makes me remember the rock of ages discipline. <laughs> you know, you know, pastor is making me laugh. So there was this guy that they, they, they were being taught how to sing the song Rock of the Ages. And of course, he's the firstborn. He didn't get it right. So he was disciplined because as a firstborn, he has to be smart and learn so that his siblings will learn after him. So because he couldn't pull his way, he got disciplined. Now he's old. But the minute you start singing Rock of Ages, you start to cry. <laughs> Fortunately for him, that song is always sung at the funeral. So this one time, everybody knows he doesn't know the person who is bereaved. And he seemed to be crying more than the bereaved family. So they are like, hey, what's going on? Why are you crying more than the bereaved? He like, said, hmm, this song Rock of Ages. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why he shared a story for us to know that that rock of ages <laughs> it triggers some weeping emotions for him but you know we will be parents and we are not going to be that you know with our first bonds. thank you to all the people who are on here you know we appreciate you so much and thank you and god bless you uh we see you all and we love you all and we cherish you all so take your position but know that in christ doesn't matter i think we want to be strong for you with Christ on our book, we are more than conquerors and successful. Mama Debbie, if you may pray for us. But before you pray, let me show something. You know, I came to have fun. So this is this came all the way from Scotland. Nice. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm just kidding. It says called home dreams of Sweden. So Mama Hinebekia Deborah. She, oh, she just man. amazed me with that can oh, gesture. And I'm like, I'll have to come and show you on today's one because it's today's one oh, family. Man. And, you know, growing up, you know, when we have the Piccadilly, you know, cookies and stuff like that, we'll keep the container and we'll make fun with, you know, it's like you, you use it, whether it's a jewelry tin or something. So she mailed it uh, to me and I was touched by it. So I was like, you know, I know she wouldn't want that, but I'll still come and show it on today's one and just let us have fun. So National First Lady, I call her the international hostess. Mm -hmm. Walking over, you touch me. I, I My love language is gifts, right? So it, it really is something that I cherish and I don't take it for granted. God bless you. Mm -hmm. So many people have celebrated their birthdays. My sister-in-law's, two of them had their birthdays. Mrs. Bernice Azel, she's our African rep. She had her birthday. Mm -hmm. And then my other sister-in-law, First Lady Yada Nsua Mwakwa, it was your birthday. Happy blessed birthday. Um, in New York PRWC, we have Mrs. Doris Mensa. She's Ms. D. Batashi. I call her my special person. She had her birthday. All of you who have had your birthdays, we thank God for your life, so we are praying for you. My husband's own is coming up, so thank God for all our March bonds. More than we please, you may pray. Okay. okay, shall we pray? Our most gracious and loving Father, we thank you so very much this afternoon. Thanking you for indeed opening our eyes and our understanding to the wisdom you have of the birth order. You are the one who sets the first one, and you are the one who sets the last one, and all of us in between. And we say thank you. Father, thank you for your love for us, O Lord. Thank you for indeed the plans you have concerning us. Thank you that you have created us so that we will show forth your praise and glory and we give you all the honor. We are praying, O God, that in any order that we come, O Lord, may you grant us the wisdom, the understanding, the discernment to give you honor. Wherever we find ourselves as the firstborn, as the second, the last, may we give you honor. And may we submit our will into your capable hands. Indeed, you are the one who has set the standard and you are the one who changes the standard. And we are praying, oh God, that as we submit our will into your hands, you will show forth your glory in every life. 
Daddy, every life is precious to you. You have plans for every one of us. And we are praying that may we draw closer to you so that you will guide us and you reveal what you want us to accomplish on this earth so that we will do it to your praise and glory. We are praying that may you help us by the power of your spirit. Likewise, we are praying for anyone, oh Lord, who has disrespected the order you place them in and who recognizes that and comes to you. Daddy, may you forgive. And that you, Lord, may you, oh Father, oh Lord, reconcile us back to you so that whatever you have given unto us, we will accomplish it. Father, you said eyes have not seen, ears have not heard what you have prepared for us. Yeah. And so we yield unto you, O Lord, looking forward to the great, mighty and awesome things that you have instilled in us and which we are going to show forth so that the world will know that indeed our God is good. We bless you. We bless you for the TW team, oh Lord. We bless you for everyone. May you bless. May you bless Mama Gifty. May you bless Pastor. May you bless the entire team, oh Lord. And Daddy, oh Lord, for all our, our listeners, oh Lord, and for those of us, may any one of us, any heart's desire mm -hmm. that is upon our hearts, oh Lord, may you grant it unto us, oh Lord, mm -hmm. that indeed we'll say that we came onto the TW program and you have blessed us. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for the privileges you've given unto us. Thank you for the honor you have given unto us. Thank you for making us your spiritual firstborns. Be magnified in your matchless name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 Very powerful prayer. God bless you so much more, Debbie. And we appreciate Apostle Daniel Engman for all that he does behind the scenes. God bless you. Yes, Lady yes. Sheila, it was good having you. Thank you. And God bless you. Very great, great, great contribution. Mama Abigo, thank you that with all the network, you managed to still be here to bless us. We thank God for all of you. I shout out to Dickness Anita, Mrs. Bonfem. God bless you for showing me kindness. And also Mrs. Sandra Kumi Bruce Mills. She did something something kind for me and she said if I call her she will not pick it so she won't allow me to thank her on the phone so yes I met she on it <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's been wonderful and we've had a good time please engage your family let's have that conversation birth order and respect it we'll be back God willing on Thursday night twilight moment and God willing on Monday we'll come and continue the conversation birth order there are so many dynamics we need to look into Thank you all. We love you. Enjoy your evening. Bye. Today's woman is a precious woman. Oh, today's woman is a glorious woman. Today's woman is a righteous woman. Oh, today's woman is a prayerful woman. Today's woman is a virtuous woman. Today's woman is a beautiful woman. Today's woman.